today. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 17. The Bible says, And say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou... Yes, today we're coming to the last of, of um, those persons that the Apostle Paul gives by name here in the book of Colossians. I count ten of them uh, in all that he mentions, and, which just leads me to kind of remind you, mention this several times, but, you know, Paul's interest in people. Uh, uh, we as believers, we ought to be interested in people. Paul's, Paul was interested in people. He cared for people. He loves people and he cares for people. Now, he, he, and we all need to keep in mind this, a, a preacher does not serve people. A preacher is not the employee of the church or the servant of the congregation. He is the servant of the Lord. And the Lord gives him um, work to do among God's people. We get that mixed up sometimes. We get it turned around and it can create all kinds of problems. And the Apostle Paul, he says, the Apostle Paul who is the one who obviously loves people and he mentions them so often here. It's the Apostle Paul who says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4, But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with, uh, with the gospel, even so we speak. And then he says this very important phrase, Not as pleasing men, but God which trieth their hearts. And if, we're, and if we get the thing turned around where we're serving people and not the Lord, it all of a sudden becomes real important that we please people. And you, you see it all the time. You see it in politics, but you see it in, in churches, in, in religion too, where the focus becomes people going around a um, very famous uh, church, Willow Creek, uh, Real, Willow Creek Community Church in, uh, in Illinois, where the pastor, a very, very large church, and I don't remember his name, Bill Hybels, uh, went around when he started his church. He started with a brand new idea here, or a, a new idea, he thought, a new concept, and that was, let's build a church around the things that people want in church. And so he went there to the neighborhood where he wanted to start this church and he started doing a survey and uh, he looked for people, first of all, that were not attending church anywhere and he began to ask them if they do not attend church. If you were to attend a church, what type of church would you want to attend? And they answered his questions about what kind of church would, please, would appeal to them and then he uh, planted a church based upon the things that would appeal most to the people in that community. Uh, pleasing men. And whenever we get it turned around and where we see it that our job is to please men rather than God, uh, compromise happens and other bad things happen too. And we do please, we do serve people, but our responsibility, uh, we do minister to people, but our responsibility is to serve God. And his, so the Apostle Paul, his priority was God. He loves people, but his priority is God. So now he's given us this list. He's gone through these 10 persons that, uh, that he just wanted to, before he closed, closed out the book of Colossians, he wanted to mention the final one we're going to speak about today is a man by the name of Archippus here in, in verse 17, um, uh, and uh, only mentioned two times in the Word of God here uh, in Colossians 4 and 17, then he's also mentioned in the book of Philemon uh, and, uh, and verse 2 in the book of Philemon. So we know very little about Archippus, uh, so there's a lot of speculation that we can make and there are some things that we can kind of imply uh, from what's found in the in the scriptures we he is probably not the pastor of the church at Colossae because that uh, that role seems to belong to Epaphras and remember as we've been going through this book of Colossians I, I've uh, said it over and over that what's what it appears happened is that the Apostle Paul while he was in the city of Ephesus doing his ministry in the city of Ephesus that he led some people to the Lord who were from the smaller community of Colossae, about 100 miles uh, away from Ephesus. Uh, Ephesus would have been their, uh, their economic center and so where they would have had to go for political, economic, social kind of, uh, of issues. And so uh, people from the outlying communities would have come into Ephesus. And while he was in Ephesus, it appears that there were some folks from Colossae who came, heard the apostle preach. Um, some of them got saved. Uh, the man by the name of Philemon opens up his house in Colossae to be uh, the the place where the church uh, is uh, uh, meets 
there in the city of Colossae, and Epaphras becomes the pastor. Uh, he's pastoring the church there, uh, and there are uh, some people who creep in and begin uh, teaching false doctrine into the church, and, the, and Epaphras has then appealed to the Apostle Paul for help to combat and to uh, fight against this false doctrine that is being, in, uh, being uh, introduced into the, the church there. So Epaphras is the pastor. It very much looks like Epaphras is the pastor of the church there. Uh, but maybe, maybe Archippus is someone like uh, an associate. We know that Epaphras uh, traveled. Uh, we know at least that he traveled uh, uh, up and, uh, and uh, went to Rome while the Apostle Paul was uh, in prison. And he's likely uh, there in Rome. Um, you know, as, as Epaphras has gone to Rome, has met with the Apostle Paul. He's likely in Rome when Apostle Paul writes this letter uh, to, Colossae, to the church at Colossae. And it may be uh, that Archippus is the person who uh, is fill, filling the pulpit and taking care of the work while Epaphras is gone. It might have been like that. The fact is we just don't know um, exactly what his job was. But there are some good things, some advantages. And I think there's reasons why God sometimes leaves things a little bit open. Because when we don't know too many facts about a person or a, a situation, then it gives us, we can, we can start looking at how um, that situation can apply to a whole lot of different, uh, uh, a different um, uh, you know, apply a whole lot of different ways. And so the fact that we don't know who Arch Archippus was uh, specifically means that we're open to apply um, whatever God word, God's word has to say for Archippus. We can apply it to you and me. To anyone uh, who's in a local church. Um, the Apostle Paul is writing a letter and he says, I've got something I want to say specifically to this one man. This one person in the church. And because we don't know exactly what that one person's role is in the church, that means that we can really apply what he's going to say to any role that anyone has in any church. It can be used that way. So whatever role he's got, Paul singles him out and, uh, and he tells the church at Colossae. Remember, he's writing to the church at Colossae here. And he tells the church at Colossae in Colossians chapter 4 and verse um, 17, Church, I want you to say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. He didn't say that to Epaphras. He doesn't say that to a church. He doesn't say to one particular member of the church. To say to another particular member, he says, Church, I want you to encourage Archippus in the ministry that he's got. Hey, listen, that would be a really good thing for all of us to learn. As members of a church, our job is to encourage one another in our ministries. Whatever ministry a person has, we ought to be encouraging them. We ought to be urging them on and not, you know criticizing and you know and sometimes I know that there's correction and things that can happen and some teaching that can happen but but rather than saying oh I would have done it differently I would have done or whatever what we ought to be doing as a church is encouraging people in whatever ministry they have encouraging them and urging them on and so Paul says to the church at Colossae say to Archippus take heed to thy ministry which thou hast received in the Lord that thou fulfill it and gives them these instructions so I want to break that passage down into three portions for you today and let's just look at three things this morning as we begin to look at the instructions God gives to the church to give to Archippus number one he says tell him take heed to your ministry and every one of us we could learn from this and I'm gonna let me uh, let me um, uh, stand in for the church speaking to the ministers of Bible Baptist Church today and just say listen every one of us what, what we need to do take heed to your ministry. Every, every Christian has a ministry or ought to have within the church that they belong to. And every Christian does have a spiritual gift and, uh, and that is needed within that church. And it becomes us then to take heed and find out what our ministry and what our spiritual strong point gift is and put it to work for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Get busy for the Lord. Don't, we ought not be allow ourselves to be kind of lax in the house of God, you know, and we come in and we enjoy the services or maybe we don't enjoy the services but we come in and we endure the services and you know do whatever we're going to do when we're in the house of the Lord and uh, and then we just get up pack it up and go home 
And uh, uh, why not think of it that way? Oh, every one of us in a local church, we ought to, we ought to, uh, we ought to uh, uh, see ourselves as being taking ownership of this, of this ministry and getting involved in the ministry. And so if you've committed yourself to be a member of this church, and if you believe that it's God's will for you to be in this church, then you need to determine what is your purpose, what's God's purpose for your being in the church, what's his place for you in the church, and get busy doing whatever it is that God's got for you to do. Now again, sometimes, and I'm as bad as anyone with this, uh, when I start working on a message like this, I start wanting to list all the kinds of ministries that are possible. And, but you know what comes up? Whenever you think about church ministries, you think of, you know, besides the pastor, and, uh, the, and then all of a sudden you start thinking Sunday school teachers, bus workers, nursery workers. You know? And then, if you really stretch yourself, you start thinking, well, there's also people who play the piano, and there's people who sing, and you know, those kind of things. And if you really, really, really work at it, there's also people who are at the sound booth, you know, and, 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 uh, and uh, you know, and those kind of things. And, and then, somewhere along in there, a person starts thinking, well, maybe we ought to consider uh, the person who cleans. That is a ministry as well. But the fact is, most of the time, when a person says, boy, I'm looking for a ministry in the church, what they mean is Sunday school teacher. Most of the time, that's what they, Pastor, I'd like a ministry in the church. What they usually mean is, I'd like to teach a Sunday school class because that's kind of what we all want to do is, uh, you know, it, cleaning isn't so fun. Um, you know, bus ministry, well, you know, Sunday school, you can come in, you come, you come in, you teach a class, you go. Bus ministry, you got to be here really early on Sunday mornings and, and it's almost time for church, Sunday night church before bus gets done with the bus, Sunday morning bus ministry. And, and there's, and, you know, so a person, when they think about, I'd like a ministry in the church, most of the time what they're talking about is, is I'd like to be a Sunday school teacher. But there's other things that need to be done in a local church. I was speaking with a, one of the members yesterday, kind of a newer member in our church yesterday, and we we're talking about it. And, here's, and he said that he said, I guess this is just my ministry. <laughs> and, um, and it's um, Brother Gordon who's bringing the bread. And he said, I, I guess this is just the ministry that God has for us. That just my ministry is that I, I bring bread to the people who would like to have bread. I said, Brother Gordon, don't ever think too lowly of that ministry. <laughs> you know, first of all, this is six dollar loaf bread. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, secondly, it's good bread, and uh, and there's all, and he uses it in a lot of different ways. And don't ever, you know, sometimes we we tend to think, well, what I do just isn't all that important. And we got to kind of get over that. Whatever you do in the ministry of this church is important. Whatever it is. And there's, you know, all kinds of ministries that are involved, ushering and, and, and all kinds of ministries that are, that are involved. And, and, and every one of them's important. And, and what we ought to do is just rec recognize if, if we're part of this church, we ought to get plugged in on whatever part of that ministry that God places us in. And, you know, uh, it is true that at churches we have um, conditions, standards, uh, before people can take certain ministries in the church. Um, and we like a person to be a member of the church long enough to have proven themselves faithful before um, they're given ministries. Over the years, I've learned a lot of things. When I started, going, when I started um, um, pastoring, going to church, but then pastoring too. Back in, when I started out, what you did is if a person come to the church, and, they, the, and I mean, you wanted people to be members of a church really badly. And so if a person came and said they want to join the church, you just join them right now before they have a chance to to change your mind, you know, get them up there and make a commitment. And so in Astor, we had all kinds of funny things happen. We had a, a girl, she was in the Coast Guard, young, you know, kid. They just got out of, out of, the, out of their basic training and, they, and she came to, to Astoria. Uh, she was going to be stationed in Astoria, so she came to our church this Sunday morning. She said, I'm stationed here, want to join the church Sunday morning. And uh, so Sunday morning, you know, <laughs> I found out she was saved. She was baptized in a Baptist church and, uh, you know, she joins the church. Sunday afternoon, she gives me a call and says, I found out that I came to the wrong town. <laughs> I'm in the whole wrong town. <laughs> so she joined the church and quit the church like in the same day. 
<laughs> and so, and uh, so you just get to a place where you start realizing, you know, you got to let people get settled in a bit and find out some things about people, and not only just joining, but then you know, find out faithfulness and uh, and in the ministry, are they going to be faithful? If they're not faithful to attending services, they're likely not going to be faithful to uh, to to accomplish a ministry. You know, if someone doesn't come on Sunday nights to church, giving them a Sunday night ministry isn't going to make them more faithful to church. It's just not, it, that's not what you do. And you, if you need, have something you need to have done on Sunday night, get someone who's there every Sunday night already. And so you need people to, and then we also have standards of lifestyle behavior um, that, um, that a person needs to agree to in order to accept ministries, certain ministries of church, because we do represent the Lord in our community. And so there are some standards that need to be kept, not just uh, when you're here at the church, but in your life. We, uh, it's hypocrisy to say, well, I'll, yes, I'll, I'll do this when I'm at the church, but I will do something exactly the opposite when I'm not at church. And so there are some lifestyle standards that, are, that, we're, that we look for for people who have ministries. But, but after a person's been at a church for a reasonable period of time, every member of the church ought to have a ministry in the church, ought to develop some, and come to a place where they've got some ministry in the church. And just say to the members of the church, take heed to the ministry. Find your ministry. See that you've got a ministry. Get involved in a ministry in, in the local church. Number two, not only should you take heed and find out what that ministry is, but then when you've got that ministry, well, take care of that ministry, or in other words, improve your abilities at the ministry. Whatever it is uh, that, that, you're, that, that you're given to do in a local church, uh, do it well. Do it, do it well and improve in, in doing it and, and, and become better at doing it than you were uh, when you started. And it might be when you, when, when you start a ministry, a pastor comes or someone comes and asks you to do a ministry. You say, well, uh, if you really think I can, I'll, I'll try that, but I don't know that I'll be any good at it. Well, if you're not very good at it at first, that's okay, but get better at it. Don't be, don't be willing to stay not good at it. Always improve and do the best that you can. Uh, to improve, it, exercise yourself to be the very best at the ministry that you've got that you can that you can do. Uh, uh, you know, I think the, that's true of the Sunday school teacher. I think it's true of the pastor. I think it's true of the person who uh, sings. You know, you it, you know if a person gets up and they's you know going to sing a song and say, oh, I've never really sung very much. I'm really really nervous. You know, I'm scared to death to do this thing. And they get up and they don't do very well. You know, that's excusable. Except. If every single time they get up, they say, I'm really, really nervous, and I just don't know how to do this, and, you know, and I haven't ever really practiced very much, that's not acceptable. There comes a point where you've got to tell someone, you know what, by now, you ought to have practiced. <clears throat> and, uh, you, you know, and whatever, you know, nursery workers, you know, well, I'm in the nursery, and, you know, and all it is is babysitting anyway. I just got to make sure the kids don't kill themselves, get hurt in there. But no, the nursery is much more than just making sure kids don't kill themselves and get hurt. And uh, I mean, it's a spiritual. I I believe the Sunday. I believe a nursery worker ought to be teaching a Sunday school lesson, praying for the kids in the presence of the kids, uh, and uh, you know, opening a Bible and reading the Bible. And, and I'm not talking about preaching an hour to them. I'm not even talking about preaching to them, but doing something where they're getting some spiritual benefit and some spiritual value from it. Um, Caleb was saying this morning that Joshua, or not Joshua, Zacharias. Well, this morning he was calling his daddy, Pastor Caleb. <clears throat> you know, now there's a whole thing, but what it means is he's hearing that. And he's in the nursery. But even in the nursery, he's old enough to understand that his daddy is a pastor. And if he's old enough to understand that his daddy is a pastor, he's old enough to understand that Jesus is God. If someone's telling him that. And uh, Sunday school uh, nursery workers ought to be doing those kind of things and teaching whatever the ministry that you have. Uh, exercise yourself to be good at it. Then take heed um, that the ministry that you have, take heed of the ministry that, that it's part of a local church. Um, um, Christ really is interested. You, and I realize I'm going to be implying some things in the scriptures. But when you read the New Testament, you say, notice Christ really is interested in, in two basic things. Number one, he's interested in adding souls to the family of God, seeing people saved. He said he came to seek and to save that which was lost. And then number two, he's interested in purifying those 
who are saved. You see, this, read the scriptures. Those are the doctrines of justification and sanctification. And what you see in the New Testament is that Jesus, that, that, that there is an interest in seeing people saved and then seeing people who are saved growing in the Lord and being purified. He wants to present himself, present him to himself without spot or blemish or any such thing. You want to see people not only born again, but then growing in the, in the things of the Lord. Now, listen, both of those things, seeing people saved and seeing people purified, both of the, those things have to do with the work of a local church. What a local church does. Remember what the local church's commission is. All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go you therefore and, and, and teach all nations, baptizing them uh, in the uh, name of the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, uh, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And so the first part of, the, of that great commission is to win people to the Lord, get them saved. The second part is to see them baptized into a local church. And then the third part is to teach them to observe or to obey the things that Jesus taught. So the first one is justification. Teach all nations, get them saved. The last one is uh, teach them to observe. That's uh, all things, that's sanctification, purifying there. Both of those involve the local church. It rotates centers around the local church. And so that no Christian really ought to consider their ministry as... Uh, uh, the ministry that they have as independent of a, of a local church. Each one of us ought to have ministries that are involved in a local church. I was thinking about that, um, you know, um, the bread thing. And Brother Gordon goes out and passes, gives out bread to uh, nursing homes and different things like that. And uh, yeah, all they'd have to do is, uh, and I'll tell him this, by the way, he's in, in another Sunday school house right now. I'll tell him this. All you got to do is when you go to the nursing home, take some tracks. And, you know, he's doing a great thing, get, but just take some tracks. No service in a ministry, so no Christian ought to consider themselves, uh, their ministry is independent of a local church. And then no service is a ministry unless it's, uh, unless it's, uh, it's meant to build a local church and to be a part of a local church. The ministry of a church really is a team effort, and each ministry member is, is, is doing his part to be uh, for the whole, the local church. Take heed to the ministry of the church then take uh, take care of your church pray for your church and give to your church and do all you can to see your church progress take heed to your ministry number two take heed that your ministry is and I'm going to use that phrase in the Lord so what he says here remember he says and say to Archippus take heed to the ministry which thou hast received and he says in the Lord now we that are Christians don't belong to ourselves we are the Lord's is what the Bible says. We have been bought at a great price, which is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the, the Son of God, and, uh, and we belong to Him. So we're not our own. We are in the Lord, and our ministries are given to us in the Lord. Um, the Lord chooses the type of ministry that we should have. The Lord enables us to do that ministry. Whatever it is that we've got, that we're doing, uh, the Lord is the one who chooses us for it and enables us to do it. And uh, so the ministry, it's a spiritual thing. Doing a ministry, it is a spiritual thing. And spiritual things have spiritual trials and spiritual rewards. That's going to happen when you're involved in ministry. There's going to be trials that are um, hard to put your finger on where they came from and, and why they happened and what do they have to do with, uh, with, with, you know, why are they happening to me? And sometimes it's just the devil doesn't like what you're doing or sometimes it's God is, is strengthening you and your, and your faith. There are trials that happen and, and then there are spiritual rewards, not earthly rewards always and things that you can see. Boy, look what happened. I did this for God and this happened to me. Uh, many times the rewards that we have are, are, are much more spiritual than that and, um, and have, a, uh, have a heavenly kind of, of ring to them rather than an earthly kind of ring. The, the ministry is going to involve working in a church. But remember this, that the church is always secondary to the Lord. I, I believe very, very strongly in a local church. But, but I don't believe we worship the church. We worship the Lord. We serve the Lord and worship the Lord in a church. I don't think you can do it outside of a church. But it has to be more than the church. It needs to be that we're, we're focusing 
on the Lord Jesus Christ. Take heed, um, take heed that your ministries or take heed uh, what, that your ministry is in the Lord. That your our ministries are given to us in the Lord. Take heed that you keep the Lord. And then let me see. I got to find. Take heed that you keep the Lord first. Then, so when you perform your ministry, if it's um, teaching or singing or visiting or cleaning or bus ministry, whatever it is, do whatever ministry that you have. Do it to please the Lord and not man. Remember. Um, the passage we began with, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God which trieth the hearts. Do what you do to please God and not man. Um, and then thirdly here, see, we who minister in the Lord we need to remember that, always remember that we're representing the Lord and not, and not just our church, um, uh, not just when we're at church, but we're representing the Lord all of the time. And that's one of the reasons why we talk about it's not just what you do at church that matters. It's what you do everywhere you go. It's what you do when you're downtown. It's what you do when you're out of town. Years ago, um, we were, I was um, visiting with some family. We went to the, uh, to the State Fair, Oregon State Fair in Salem, Oregon. And so we're out there walking around, you know, and looking at things at the fair. And, um, and, <laughs> and all of a sudden, a guy comes and he grabs me from behind. <laughs> And there's a big man, Brother Bob Wheeler, he pastored in Corvallis, Oregon. And Brother Wheeler was like monstrous compared to me. I mean, he towered over me in every way and, you know, height and weight and everything and, and all of that. And football play, he used to be, I think, a pro football player. And uh, he's passed away now. But anyway, um, and that has nothing to do with anything, but except for I just thought of that. Uh, anyway, he grabbed me from behind and then, and, you know, startled me and he turned, and I turned around and he says, uh, aren't you glad you weren't doing something you weren't supposed to do as a preacher? <laughs> It just you never know where <laughs> when you're a believer you just never know where people uh, where people are going to see you and 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 oftentimes people see you and don't and you don't even know they saw you and and um, and your testimony reflects upon the Lord Jesus Christ not just when you're in the building of the local church but it reflects upon the Lord Jesus Christ everywhere you are and so your testimony ought to be right with the Lord it ought to be the right kind of testimony anywhere you are and and uh, so we need to lead high standards uh, in our actions in our words in our lifestyle in our appearances have you, any of you been following some of you probably don't really care about this but uh, Sarah Palin family uh, brawl up there in Anchorage and uh, you know, and 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 you do what it, say what you want to say about all that kind of stuff. Whether you're politics, I don't really. I'm not a politician kind of a person. Really don't care a lot about, about politics and things. But uh, what I what what's uh, what is a shame to me is um, here is a family that promotes themselves as being you know this God fearing you know and church going. And when you listen to the police tape of uh, Bristol Palin. <laughs> Cussing up a storm. And mama in the background say, I'm so proud of my daughter for standing up and fighting for her family. And I'm thinking, oh. No Christian testimony whatsoever. Uh, you know, Christian testimony works really well in confined for them in confined environments where they're trying to use it to accomplish a pertinent personal a particular agenda. But the Christian testimony is completely uh, thrown away when some family crisis happens, and uh, that should never happen in your life and mine. We need to understand that we are we are we belong to the Lord. We are His. We don't just attend church because it's something that we prefer. We who are Christians belong to the Lord, and our testimony ought to our testimony ought to be relevant all day long, every day, seven days a week. All right, then take heed to your ministry um, to fulfill your ministry, to do what you're called to do. So fulfill it, number one, by doing your very best. I've already kind of dealt with that, approving, improving on your work and, you know, and doing the best that you can in the, the ministry that you have. Uh, uh, be, uh, fulfill it by uh, being thorough and, and, again, by improving in how you do it. I think about uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15. The Apostle Paul writes to Timothy and says, Meditate on, upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. And then he says this, that thy profiting may appear to all. Whatever ministry that you've got, it ought to be that people can look at you and say, you know, I can see how you're growing. I can see how you're profiting. I can see how God is working 
in your life and in your ministry and give yourself to your ministry in such a way that you're profiting and it will appear to people that they will see it happening in your life whatever it is give yourself wholly to it uh, fulfill your ministry by sticking with it um, remember the Bible says be not weary in well doing stick with it discouragement is one of the major key weapons of the of the devil don't allow discouragement to stop you from doing your ministry I mean, we get discouraged. Things happen that, that discourage us and disillusion us and things aren't where we wish they'd be and, and all of those kind of things. Don't let discouragement stop you from doing what God's called you to do. Especially when you've got a ministry, don't let discouragement stop you from working your ministry. Just look at that. Figure if you're discouraged, oh man, I don't really want to do that ministry today. Just figure that's the devil and do this and say, well devil, I'm not going to give you that victory. I'm going to do it anyway. And if you'll do it anyway, many times you'll, be let, you'll, you'll overcome the discouragement by doing that. So uh, work at your ministry and don't, and don't allow discouragement to stop you. Keep on with your ministry and then fulfill your ministry. Uh, just I'm going to say this, just by doing it. Um, the ministry depends upon faithful people who are responsible enough to do what it is they say that they're willing to do it at a local church. A, a church just couldn't function. For instance, if a pastor wasn't responsible enough to, um, to prepare his messages. Years ago, when I was in Astoria, there was a, uh, I pastored the, the Bayview Baptist Church in Astoria. There was another church in town. It was called Bible Baptist Church. It was Conservative Baptist Convention, or Conservative Baptist Association. And the pastor's name was a guy by the name of Fisher. I think Doug, but I can't remember. No, not Doug. Uh, he, he was Pastor Fisher. He was Pastor Fisher. Anyway, and because of, you know, small town and so forth, and, you know, people talk and that kind of stuff, um, um, someone came to our church one evening and told me what had happened. And, uh, and, and Brother Fisher had been to a conservative Baptist convention somewhere, to meet one of their meetings, and he came back on a Sunday morning, and, uh, and here's what he told his church. He said, folks, we were so busy this week in, in meetings and, and preaching and stuff, I didn't prepare a message. So let's just fellowship this morning. <laughs> Now, uh, I know there's a difference between a conservative Baptist church and an independent Baptist church, but I'm pretty sure that an independent Baptist church, that wouldn't fly. Someone would come up and say, well, preacher, you better be instant in season, out of season. You either find a message or find a new place to be. <laughs> and so, you know, something like that, it probably happened like that. And uh, you couldn't handle it too much if you had a pastor. What about a preacher who, uh, uh, who only filled it, fulfilled his ministry um, when, um, when, when he felt well? You know, um, you, he gets up and boy, it's a sunny day outside and it's sunny inside. And just everything feels good. And he says, boy, I feel like preaching today. What if uh, your preacher once in a while got up and just said, you know, I just... I just don't feel like preaching today. I just don't have it in me. I wouldn't go over very well. It just, it just couldn't, a church couldn't operate that way. A, a church depends upon a preacher who's um, on top of life enough that even when life is giving him challenges, he can stand, get behind a pulpit and, 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 and put on a good job for the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I'm trying to think of, you know, I mean, do the work he's called to do and fight the fight that he is given to do, even if he doesn't feel like it that day, even if things aren't exactly right, even if maybe there's some family issue or even if maybe there's some physical or financial issue and he still just gets up and he does his job. Well, a church needs every member to be like that to just say I'm gonna do what I'm called to do because I'm called to do it I'm gonna push through whatever it is that's going on in life I'm gonna get myself on top of this thing and I'm gonna be where I ought to be and I'm gonna be there the best that I can be on that particular day I understand some days are better than other days and that kind of stuff happens to all of us but I'm gonna be where I'm supposed to be and I'm gonna be the best that I can be at what I'm supposed to do at that particular time I'm gonna do it the very best that I can and just say to Archippus and to every member of Bible Baptist Church in Puyallup, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfillest.